Hi, my name is Sabrina Aragone and I teach Comparative Law at the University of Bologna. Hi, I'm Guido Smorto and I teach Comparative Law at the University of Palermo. We are very thankful to Diritti Comparati for granting us the opportunity to present our very short introduction to Comparative Law that was published in December 2023 by Oxford University Press. First things first, why did we embark on this endeavor? So we had collaborated for several years in different research projects and we found our approaches to legal comparison to be very complementary. Of course, we have a common core of knowledge as we are both comparativists, but my field is comparative public law, while Guido is an expert in comparative private law. We always found our exchange very enriching, and this is somehow the original reason that made us think of putting together our ideas into a common publication. Second question is why the very short introduction series? We realized that we were both keen readers of the very short introductions, so when OUP offered us the opportunity to contribute to the series, we were very enthusiastic about the idea. Now, a few challenges came out of the opportunity, the greatest one being that the format obliged us to be extremely precise and very, very condensed. Yes, the biggest challenge was to provide the core knowledge of the topic in a nutshell. We had to give the reader a sense both of the subject's contours and of the debates that shape it. And this is also reflected in the style of the volume. We try to avoid using jargon, we try to avoid using even overly academic language, but at the same time without oversimplifying the topic. It was not an easy task and certainly it was more complex in some ways than writing a longer book on the same issues. As for the structure, the book is composed of six main chapters and a short conclusion, which aim to give an overview of the basic definition, key concepts and also applications of comparative law. Yeah, we try to address all the fundamental aspects of comparative law, spanning from methodology up to the practical uses of legal comparison, as this field has always responded to this double dimension, combining theory and practice. We explain how the interest for foreign and comparative law arose in a context of openness to other cultures at the beginning of the 20th century, coexisting with the rise of domestic legal systems that became the main objects to compare, at least at the beginning. We assess why comparative law has to be considered a newcomer vis-à-vis -vis other comparative disciplines, for example, comparative linguistics or comparative biology, and also a newcomer vis-à-vis -vis other legal fields with a transnational dimension. In the book, we claim that doing comparative law entails a humble approach to the law, in particular to the concept of legal sources that necessarily change depending on the legal systems that are analyzed. We are aware of the difficulties of sound legal comparison, and this is why we devoted a significant section of the book to methodology. Yes, in this section we try first to uh, give an account of the plurality of approaches adopted over time in comparative legal studies. But at the same time we try to stress the common ground of comparative law which is the reaction against conceptualism and positivism. Uh, we do that by showing how a comparison that is based only on concept would miss crucial differences in the substance of laws. Uh, we show this need of comparative legal studies to focus on something which is less contingent and variable than legal categories and the quest for a universal language, and how this need was the basis for moving to the function of legal rules and concepts by assessing how different legal systems tackle a social problem. Uh, in this way, we try to give an account of the classical version of functionalism, but also of the new, more pragmatic versions of this approach, like legal origins, as an example. In the second part of the chapter, we also address the so-called cultural turn and the new wave of critical and cultural comparative legal scholars that criticized functionalism for its supposed lack of its sophistication and naive approach to legal comparison. 
the end of this part ponders also on how this pluralism in methodology may affect the development of comparative law as a discipline. The following section studies how these different approaches to comparative law may contribute to the construction of sameness and differences. In this regard, we describe both the presumption of similarities, but also the presumption of dissimilarity that has been conceived in reaction to the first one. And we discuss the outcomes of these different approaches in taxonomy, legal change, change and methodology. Also, the chapter deals with the political dimension which is behind the apparently technical choices of comparative law and the connected aspiration to decolonize comparative law. Another significant part of the book is devoted to taxonomy and to the attempt to classify and mapping the legal system of the world. We do that by providing a brief description of the legal taxonomy offered first by René David, but also offering an account of other new ways of mapping legal system which are less biased than Western oriented. Yeah, from this perspective, we analyze the different legal traditions and we classify them in a novel way through four main categories, namely oral traditions, religious traditions, traditions based on duties, and finally Western traditions. The last part of the book deals with the practical uses of comparative law with reference to constituent processes, legislative procedures, and also constitutional, but not only constitutional adjudication. So I would say this is our volume in a nutshell. We do hope that it is going to be a nice reading for all of you. We look forward to receiving feedbacks from the community of Diritti Comparati that we thank again for giving us this opportunity. Thank you.